All right, everybody, about a minute before we go live. So just let me know you can hear me and we will kick this thing off. Sound is good, loud and clear. Awesome. 41 seconds. Good to see all the regulars in the house. So we've got some fun stuff lined up this week. So um, glad to see you all. Looks like a good crowd today. Good group of people. Awesome. So we are going and let's do our countdown. Ready guys for the countdown? Here we go. 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, blast off. <laughs> And hello, everybody. Glad you could join me for this week's live stream. So glad to see so many regulars in the house. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. And if you're new, uh, feel free to join in the chat if you're live, which is between 1 and 2 p.m. Pacific time, which is right now. Every Thursday, we do this live at 1 p.m. Um, if you're watching the replay, welcome to the replay crew and drop your comments into the chat because only the live chat is working while we are going live. And for those of you, if you miss anything, uh, just to let you know, though it's right at the beginning, I should probably tell you this later, but the replay will be live afterwards. So we've got quite a bit of stuff to cover today. So if I go along at a fast clip and maybe you miss something, as soon as it's finished, YouTube puts the stream back up, um, you know, as a replay and you guys can watch it. And uh, at that point, um, you can watch it again. Okay, let me get my screen all set up over here. Um, yeah, all right. So here we go. I am going to share my screen with me on there. Now, I, what I'm doing this week, I'm just doing something a little bit different. I've got a slightly higher resolution screen. Let me know if that's going to work for you guys, um, because... To be honest, it really helps me because when I'm working on such a tiny resolution, there's not a lot of space on my desktop and it's so different than what I usually work with. It's actually quite difficult to do that. So when I go a little bit higher res, it makes it a lot easier for me to work. But if it's hard for you guys to see things, um, you know, obviously that's the most important thing. Uh, let me know and um, and we'll see where we go from here. You know, we try and find a happy balance between what's easy for me to work and what's good for you guys because obviously doesn't matter if you guys can't see what's going on and it doesn't help you all right having said all of that let's jump in and by the way david holstock if you're in the house um you are don't forget to send me a message i want to give you that course uh from last week because you did mention the equalize now it's amazing how well my brain works when i'm not live just so you guys know if you've ever done a live presentation whether it be in front of people or live stream, your brain is working about a quarter of what it does because everything switches from your part of your brain that thinks to your reptilian brain um, because of the um, adrenaline, you know, kind of takes over from real thinking. So Equalize. All right, so I've got something for you guys on Equalize because last week I didn't have something for you. In fact, we couldn't even find it. So <laughs> I've got that solved right now. Let's just do this really quick. Um, I just actually was looking at this right before um, the session today and I was like okay what can we do with equalize so let's just jump in I guess we're into it right now so we're going to go under the image adjustments and equalize so what equalize does is it balances out all of the tones and everything in the image but what it's doing really nicely here look at all the details bringing through in the background it's actually pretty cool problem is our subject is way too dark and that's where we can mix it with the history brush so we're just going to dive straight into this wasting no time we're going to grab the history brush and then the history brush has a panel that it needs to work with and the panel that history needs obviously is the history panel so if i pull up the history panel what i'm able to do is say hey you know what this is where we are i want to paint from the previous state so i'm clicking on this previous state right now and this is what's going to paint see that so what I want to do is just make a quick selection around here. And I'm just going to do this quick just to show you guys how it works. 
and of course you can do a better job so if we're going to grab our magic wand or any of the magic tools that's these three here object select magic um whatever these are the magic tools and then when you do that it gives you the option up here to do select subject so we're going to do select subject it's going to make a selection around our person grab our brush let's grab a default brush and I'm just going to make the brush huge and oops let's make sure we're not using that brush let's use our history brush not the art history but you want the history brush the art history brush will do this with a special effect and all I do is just paint over my person takes them back to how they were and um, you know we can see it shows things a lot better in the background there so that's the image after and if we look at this let's revert this uh, and you can see what it looked like before see how everything was blown out in the background so there's a use for equalize now there was another thing that I was stumped with and I don't know why once again maybe my brain wasn't working and that was when we talked about the library link smart objects and how to convert them back to a regular smart object there was a particular setting I was looking for which is there today when my brain is working um, so when you drag anything into the image here inside of Photoshop from the library what it does is it creates this little cloud icon. The cloud icon means that this is a library linked smart object. So that means if I update this, it updates it in the library and it also updates with any document that's using it. This is great for things like logos, different things like that. If you want to know how that works, look at last week's live stream. But one of the things I wanted to let you guys know, I said, you know, when you drag this in here, what if you want to change it, but you don't want it to update in the library? Well, there's an easy way to update this into just a regular smart object. Now it's not to duplicate the smart object and all those things work. That's not what I was looking for. This is what I was looking for. Go on the name, right click. And then what you're looking for, here's just embed linked. So look at this. See how we've got that little cloud icon? We go here, we change it to embed linked. Now it becomes a regular smart object. I can change it, doesn't affect anything else in the library. So that's what I meant to show you last week when my brain wasn't working. All right, let's move on to something new this week. Uh, my brain is working and hopefully it will keep working. And um, so we're looking at some effects. So I've got some kind of interesting ones I want to show you guys. I've just got some notes here that I brought up. Let me bring these up on my second screen. And by the way, guys, if any of this rings a bell or rings any... Uh, anything interesting with you do me a favor and hit that like button it helps us the YouTube algorithm YouTube algorithm why is that such a tongue twister to say guys so it helps with the YouTube algorithm so um, yeah that helps us uh, hit that like button and by the way if you were not subscribed hit the subscribe button turn on that notification bell and you'll get notifications when I upload new videos all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to convert this photograph into a painting and it works in any photograph at all and some work better than others in fact this one works pretty average but it still gives a good result by the way um, Bruce is not with us this week he is at the vet his cat is uh, getting chemo um, so he's taking care of that so um, he's in our thoughts and his cat is definitely in our thoughts all right so moving on let's start we're going to duplicate the layer Control J will duplicate that layer and we've got our duplication now what I want to do is I want to create just a quick outline for this you know like if you were doing a painting watercolor whatever and maybe you would be painting around the edges to create you know the, the outline so the way to do that is a filter that's been in Photoshop forever <laughs> that we've used forever and that's the stylized find edges all right, so there we go. Find edges, very familiar with that. Now, on its own, it looks pretty horrible because of the colors. Although you could kind of use those colors for the effect. But what I'm going to do is desaturate it. So Command Shift U or Control Shift U in Windows will desaturate that. But I'll also show you where it is. It's under the image adjustments. And if we go down to desaturate, just converts it to black and white. Great. Let's tuck this away. We'll use it later. So what I want to do is duplicate the background layer one more time. So I've selected the background. Let's make a copy of it. Control J, Command J. And here we go. Uh, clone Bruce, <laughs> just Stuart Braithways in the chat there. Kiora Stewart from New Zealand, good to see you. All right, so what we're going to do is apply a watercolor filter effect on here. So let's go under the filter. And we're going to go to the filter gallery. 
Now, you guys may be familiar with these. These filters actually used to belong to, I believe, uh, Corel, something like that. It was a different collection, and then Adobe bought them, and then they were called Gallery Effects, and now they're in the effects uh, filter in the filter gallery along with some other effects that have been with Photoshop. So they put a whole bunch of effects here into this gallery in case you guys were not aware of that. All right, so here we are inside our watercolor effect and right now it's applying it we can see this is what it's going to look like and you can drag this out too if you want to get a bit of preview and let me just hit the minus key a couple of times so we can zoom out and you can see the preview here now this is under the artistic filters so you'll see it here and right now we're doing the paint now there's a lot of different options we have here we can increase the texture if we want um, it's a large file, so it's going to take a little moment for this to update. So just give it a second. So while that is applying, how are you guys doing? Are you all doing well this week? I hope you are. Hey, Rob. Hey, Susan. Good to see you. Polka Dot Studio. Good to see you, Tracy. Glad you're all in the house. Okay, so brush detail. We can change this. We've got a lot of different settings here. If you want to make it more or less detailed, um, shadow intensity is a lot of different settings but what I actually find working here is keeping the brush detail pretty low because we don't want too much detail we want a brushed effect and I'm also going to drop this texture down to about one now here's an interesting thing too I don't know if you guys were aware but when you're working inside these filters even though I'm pretty much going to apply it like this if I wanted to mix more than one filter together I can and that's one of the nice things about the filter gallery if you want to add another filter, just hit the little plus button here and it creates a new one and I can just double up on the watercolor or I can select where I am and maybe I want to apply a dry brush in here as well. So notice when I apply that, now it puts a dry brush on top of the watercolor so we can have more than one. Now you can drag to change the order of these and it will give you a different result. Just want to let you guys know that. And I should probably be showing this maybe with a smaller resolution file because this is um, taking quite a while to process this. But let me turn the dry brush off and I'm going to click OK and apply the watercolor effect. All right. So we're going to give it a little bit more. Um, David Holstock, yeah, fine. you could use the find edges to help with um, selection, with defining edges. Yeah, you, that would actually work. Anything that adds edge contrast is going to do that. All right, so here we go. Look at this. We're getting there. We've got a, now a kind of more of a painterly effect. But we're not going to apply the outline yet. I want to do something else. I want to put a little color wash over the top of this. So let's create another layer. So we've got a new layer on top of that. And let's select some colors. So let's grab the brush. The B key will give us the brush. Now, if I hold down the Alt of the Option key, notice that changes it to the eyedropper. So I'm going to grab some of this yellowish tone. And I'm going to select that. And there we go. We've got that yellow, goldish kind of a tone. Looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to hit the X key so we get the background. And I could go in here and select, you know, a tone like that. Actually, that's pretty good. Or I could select something like the blue. Um, but I think I'm going to go with this kind of a tone skin color just to see what it looks like now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix all this up into a clouds filter so we're gonna choose the filter render and then we're gonna go to clouds now clouds are a great way to create texture in fact when you want to create texture inside of Photoshop this could almost be the foundation of most textures I kind of like that you know I'm gonna give this a canvas texture so let's go back to the gallery. So let's go to the filter and let's go to the gallery, filter gallery one more time. I'm getting a little off script here, but that's fine. So let's go to our texture. And under the texture, let's grab the texturizer and I'm going to use canvas and click OK. And we're going to apply this. Just give us a little texture. Yeah, that looks very very strange and weird I must have applied the wrong filter by accident but I kind of like that but let's choose blur and we're going to use a Gaussian blur right now and this is going to give us a kind of a I just want this kind of texture here because what I'm going to do with this is let's go into some different blending modes and we just want to kind of apply this here we go 
Um, overlay looks pretty nice. Some of these other ones are looking good, but I don't want it showing in the black areas. I just want it to go, here we go, into the painted areas. And the reason I'm doing this, if you look at it before and then after, see how it gives it more of a brush tone as if we actually were using more paints. Uh, so it just kind of gives more of a, you know, a color palette, so to speak. So there's before that, there's after. I think that adds a lot. Now I'm going to create, uh, let me turn the top layer on. This is our layer where we put the outline. And now we're going to blend this in using some different, out of the top group, this is going to be the darken group. So we could use the darken, the multiply, color burn. Just looking through here and the overlay ones might give us a somewhat of an interesting result too. Uh, these light ones are not going to work because we want to be working with the darker ones. So I'm looking at kind of these darken, I'm almost liking the multiply or the color burn. I think I like the multiply. Now what we're going to do is take the opacity all the way down to zero and just slowly bring it up a little bit just till we get, there we go. So we've got some kind of outline brush strokes there that's just kind of adding a little bit of punch to this effect. All right, let me grab all of these together and I'm going to put them in a group. So I'm going to grab the bottom one, hold down the shift key and click on the top, selects all the layers. Control G will select everything into a group and we're going to call this paint. And by the way, if you guys missed anything, don't worry, the replay will be live after this. All right, so we've got the paint on top. That's definitely looking cool. So I want to just take this a little bit step further and just do something kind of fun. So I'm just going to create a layer underneath and I'm going to give it, you know, option backspace. I just want to kind of fill this with just a solid color. I don't quite like that color control U. Let's find something that just kind of looks a little bit like a, a canvas sort of not too much saturation, just something, you know, where it's just not white. So, you know, a little paper kind of effect. Great. That looks good. So what I want to do now is I want to hide our layer and I want to make it look like I'm painting this in almost dabbing it in with some with some brushes. So what I want to do is hide all of this inside a mask. So to add a mask, we just click on the layer mask and that will show everything. If you want to hide everything, hold down the Alt key. That's Option on Windows and actually Alt Windows, Option on Mac, and it will create a black mask. And if I hit the Shift key, you can see what it does is it hides everything. So what I want to do is I want to paint all of that in slowly. So let's grab a brush. And what I'm going to do for the brush is I'm going to use a white for the foreground color, and I'm going to use a cloud brush. Now, if you guys don't know, let me just quickly, this is where you can get it from shopcafe.com forward slash vault. If you guys want the brush, I'll give you that brush. Actually, I've got a whole set of cloud brushes here and a bunch of other stuff. So just take a screen capture of that, guys. photoshopcafe.com vault. Go there and there's a whole bunch of freebies. If you're already on our mailing list, it's actually every email just has a link underneath. So you don't need to sign up again. Just click on that email and uh, and you can download all the stuff on the vault so there's brushes actions photos all kinds of stuff there all right so that's going away let's continue so now we're going to use said brush and if you missed that don't worry it'll be there on the replay so we're grabbing a white brush so we're going to open up our brushes panel and let's grab some of these cloud brushes we're talking about so we've got cloud soft cloud let's grab the soft cloud this is the whole set here that i gave you guys soft fluffy all kinds of stuff I'm going to grab the soft cloud and we've got the opacity down. Let's take our flow down to about 20. Uh, shift two will change the flow if it's working correctly, which let's continue. All right. So we've got the brush. Okay. So I've dropped the opacity down 20. That's fine. I'm going to use my walk on pen, which is pressure sensitive. You don't have to use a walk on pen. You can use a mouse, but I just want to do this because I can slowly start to build this up. And in fact, let's even go down to 10% and just slowly, what I'm doing is just building this up as if, you know, we've got some kind of a canvas here and I'm painting this on. Now you can do the same thing for mouse, just start on a slow flow. And let's create a heart since it's Valentine's Day next week or whenever it is. Singles Awareness Day. Um, and so we can create that heart, kind of like what we used on the cover photo. And there we go. Now we've got something that looks like a painting. So if we started here, we are before just with the photograph 
and here we are after we created something you know it's kind of fun something interesting so hopefully you guys liked it if you do hit a thumbs up appreciate that because we don't have enough likes on here yet come on guys there's a 260 of us and only 70 likes so do me a favor hit that like button all right so we're moving on to the next effect let's do this one um so something kind of fun we're gonna do some pop dots or you know like the comic book you know the 50s comic book effect the screen effect so what i want to do is i want to make a duplicate of the background layer Control j will duplicate that background so we've got a copy of it now uh can you smash like again yvonne sure well go ahead although it only, only allows it hey bruce is in the house good to see you bruce glad you could join us get your drink orders in with bruce bicknell all right so let's continue here we're in the filter and we're going to go to the filter gallery once again i just figure i want to spend a little time in this filter gallery today because i don't know it just seems like it's really quite an amazing filter and it doesn't get enough love all right so what we're going to do in here is we're going to go under the stylize option nope sketch we're going under the sketchy sketch and what we want to apply here is a half tone pattern all right so we're clicking on the half tone pattern here and let's give it a second here to apply oh it looks like the half tone pattern's there and let's turn the watercolor up and by the way if you have too many filters showing here you can select them and you can hit that little trash can and that will get rid of it. Now, here's an interesting thing about this halftone pattern. Notice it's using the foreground and background colors. So if you want to create a low contrast version of that, you can do this. But let me cancel out of here. And I'm going to hit the D key to reset the foreground background color. Black and white is going to give us the maximum amount of contrast. So let's go back under the filter, back to the filter gallery. And let's go back, making sure that we have, let me get rid of that watercolor. I guess I canceled it, so it went back to where we were. And let's go back to our pop dots or our dots under these uh, sketch. And watch this. When I hit half tone pattern, now it's in black and white because it's using the foreground and background colors over on the left hand side. So if you guys are ever using it and you're wondering why it wouldn't work the way you wanted it, that's that's why. All right, so we're going down and this is creating this nice pattern. So you can change the size, obviously, so you can have a very, very fine grain or um, half tone pattern, or I'm going to increase this. I want to go as big as possible. Now, watch what happens when we use the contrast. What the contrast does is it gets rid of the gray and forces everything to a black and white. So if I want to really push it far, we can here. I feel it's just a little far, so let's come back. So we're looking for, you know, kind of like they would in the comic books where we've got just... Because what happened is they weren't able to print smooth gradients. So they were able to just add colors and then the more colors it would kind of give the simulation of gradients. Um, okay, let's go down here. And so we're going down there. All right, great. So that's looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit more contrast. Click OK. So now we want to put our color back there very very easy to do the color grab the background layer actually there's two ways we could do it we could just change the color blend mode of this or throw a color on top i'll show you both ways so right now we're in normal blending mode which means that it's affecting everything in the photograph now if we change this and we say you know what i don't want to change the color i just want to change the detail or the luminance well you would go to luminosity blend mode and luminosity blend mode will change the luminance pick up all the colors underneath cool all right let me show you another option let's create a layer on top and we're going to apply a gradient all right so with the gradient selected that's a very boring gradient let's find a more interesting one we're going to grab the gradient fill and under the gradient fill we've got all kinds of things we've got you know i doubt i'm going to be using the orange colors but i just want to show you we've got all these kind of colors you got pastels, you've got neutrals, you got all kinds of colors. And um, we, we might change some of these in a little bit, but let's go under the legacy gradients. And uh, by the way, if you don't know where the legacy gradients are, you can't go in here and load them. What you have to do is open up the panel. So if you go under the window and you go to the gradients panel, 
And under the gradients panel here, click down and then you'll see an option that says legacy gradients. Turn that on, it will add the legacy gradients to your gradients fill panel. Okay, let's continue. So now we know where to find these. Let's go to the legacy gradients. These are the gradients that used to ship with Photoshop. And I'm gonna grab the rainbow colored one because this will give us all the colors. I'm gonna change the angle so it's more of an angle and I don't need all the colors of the rainbow at once. I just wanna grab some colors. I'm gonna increase the scale. Beautiful. Now let's go here and now we wanna change this and just take the color. So change the blend mode to color blend mode and notice now the colors are showing and then the details are showing from underneath. Now here's the thing, if you don't like those colors and you wanna cycle through the gradient, here's a little trick. Double click on the gradient, this will bring up gradient fill. Now we don't need to use a gradient fill, we just need it active. And if it's active, I can drag on my document and I can change the colors. I can cycle through all the different colors. See that just by dragging. So what it does is it turns it into a live canvas. And I kind of like these colors better. You know, this purple is the Pantone color of the year. I don't know if you guys knew that. Pantone color of the year this year is something purple, but it's a purple color. All right, so you could do that. Now, of course you could change it if you wanted to have more of a radial gradient, um, which I think looks kind of cool here too. So that's how we do that. All right, so how are you guys doing there? Am I going too fast? Am I not going fast enough? Um, let me know. Good to see you. R&D, good to see you there. Rod Shelley, Ralph Nelson, glad you could join us, buddy. Glad to see you. And um, Rod Shelley's here too. All right, great. So what I'm gonna do is show something else. Scan lines. Now there's so many different ways of creating these TV scan lines. Now. You know, I like to do it with patterns, I always have, but here's another way. Let me just control J, let's copy this. And we're gonna go into another filter. I don't know if you guys knew this, maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but you can create these lines using filters very, very quickly. If we go under our filter, let's go back to our filter gallery. Here we are. Remember we did the sketch thing here just like a second ago? Uh, if you're like me, you've probably forgotten already. And I'll just do that tip again and just pretend I didn't do it. Um, all right, so what we're going to do here is pattern type. And we're going to go down to line. And we choose the line. Oh, look at that. There's the TV scan lines just like that. Let me just go full screen with this. Oh, by the way, control zero or command zero will enable you to pop this filter full screen. I don't know if you guys knew that. Now you do. And what I'm gonna do is in the bottom here is I'm just gonna zoom this out a little bit so we can see it. All right, that's better. All right, so let's look pretty good. We can change the size of these lines. See that? We can make them thinner, thicker. Uh, we can pull this down. You guys remember these lines, you know, when screens were um, interlaced? This is interlacing. For those of you who are a little younger, this is what TV used to look like for us. Yep, no kidding. Used to look just like this. Um, so I'm gonna click OK, and we're gonna apply this. Now, I don't know about you guys, I like the matrix, so why don't we give it a little matrix effect. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna give it a solid color fill. Let's give it a greenish tint. Put this into color blend mode like we just showed. Pull the opacity down a little bit so it's not quite so strong, and there we go. Now we're in the matrix, and I feel like I wanna make that music, you know, that um, I cannot produce that sound. Um, but well, it would have been nice, right? Okay, so that's, uh, you know, another effect. Now you could, let me control J, I'll make a copy of this. Um, hey, you know, let me put this, I'm gonna show you another way to do this because I wanna do something different with it. So I'm gonna go here and I wanna create my own scan lines so I can put them on a separate layer so I can warp them and distort them. Um, so I distort just the scan lines without distorting the photo if you wanna have that flexibility. By the way, there's the green before or after. Let's keep it. Okay, so I'm gonna choose File New. And I'm gonna create a new document and I'm gonna give it a height of eight pixels. Now let's make it 10. I'm gonna make it bigger. If you want fine lines, use a smaller amount. If you want larger lines, choose a larger amount. Let's just do a 10 by 10 square. 
and it's going to create a new document. Let's zoom in. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to make the top half of this black. Rectangular marquee tool, make a selection around the top. Black is the foreground. Alt or Option Backspace will fill it with black. Control D will turn off the selection. Or you can just click on any other tool to turn off the selection. All right, let's select the whole thing. So just click and drag. And now I want to create a pattern. So choose Edit. And the same way you would define a brush, we define a pattern right here. And we'll call it 10px SL for scanline. Click OK. And we can throw this away. We don't need it anymore. Great. All right, let's go back to our image that we were on. And what we've got is a brand new layer. So I'm just going to fill this now. So to fill, Shift Backspace will bring up the Fill dialog box. That would be Shift Delete on Windows. And then for Fill, we can use the pattern. And under Custom Patterns, you'll see there's the one we just created. That's our pattern right there. Click OK to apply it. Now, if I want to change the blend mode of this, we've got a couple of different ways. We can go into the darker mode where we get the dark lines, or we can go into the lighten mode where we get lighter lines. So it's entirely up to you whether you want to lighten up the image or you want to darken it. In this case, we'll darken it. And I want to make it a little bigger. So Control T would make it larger. But I'm about to show you another tip. So I could go here and I can make it larger by hitting Control T. And that'll work. But let me show you another way we can do this. Let me delete this layer. And what we're going to do is apply a new layer. So we're under the new layer, Effects. And we're going to do Pattern. So here's an interesting thing about the Pattern Fill. The very, when we add these to our, our textures, they're going to be available under the Pattern Fill as well. So if we choose Pattern Fill, we can click there, and there is our Scanline Pattern. So it's going to be in our library, and it's always going to be available for us if we want to use it again. But the nice thing about this is I can scale it here, and I can get the size I want nicely in here. Now, generally, you say, hey, you shouldn't scale up, because if you scale up, you're going to lose quality. But that would normally be true. But in a case like this where we've got perfectly horizontal lines, you're not going to lose any resolution. You will only use, you'll lose the resolution if it's going at an angle. I mean, sure, if I made it like a million times larger, you'd start to see a little softness on the edges. But when you're using perfectly horizontal and vertical lines, they are not. Now, if that's making you dizzy or I'm hypnotizing you, let's quickly change it to blend mode before, ah, there we go before people lose their mind. So we're going to darken, and we can drop the opacity of that down just a little bit if you wanted to go that way. The nice thing about using this as that adjustment layer is I feel like these lines are too far apart. They're too big. So we can double click on here. We can go back into our scale, and now we can adjust it to fit. And I feel like, you know what? That looks better. So flexibility is obviously the best way to work when you're in Photoshop. It's always good to have that. It's also nice because once you create those patterns, those patterns are going to be there forever inside of there. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rasterize this for a second. So I'm just going to create a new layer and um, hit Control E and select the other layer. So I've got that layer and a new layer selected. Hit Control E. It's just a fast way to rasterize it. And the reason I want to rasterize it is, and get back to our blend mode, there's our multiply. I want to add some waves, some zzz, 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 zzz to it. So let's choose filter. And then we're going to go under our distort menu. And now under the distort, we've got some different ways we could do this. We could try ripples and shears and sphere eyes. I think we're going to try a ripple and see how this looks. And let's go for a large size ripple. There we go. Click OK. And there we go, we get that old, you know, the TV kind of Batman slash matrix. Let's make it bigger though, even though I told you to do it with the pattern. In this case, we're just going to make it larger here and drop down the blend mode just a little bit. So now we get that kind of little wiggly distortion there in the scan lines. And I don't know, it's just kind of fun. 
Now, if you wanted to apply it to the whole thing and you were like, well, you know, a purist would say that's not how it works because there's always a purist, um, you would just go like this. Let me show you. If you wanted the other option, I'm going to grab both these layers, uh, Control G, put them in a group. You got to turn off the background first. Control G will put those into group. Control J will copy that dupe group. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just want to go in here and I just create a separate one. So I'm going to choose to merge the group. And that's how you raster, rasterize a group. So everything there is in that group. And now we can choose the filter. And if we choose ripple, it will apply the very last filter that was applied. And there we go. That will ripple the background too. So if people, you know, because there's always somebody that's like, oh, no, you can't just ripple the scan lines. You've got to do the whole image. Okay, so there we go. That's how you can do that if you prefer to do it that way. Um, so there's a little flexibility and some different ways of working there using that filter. So once again, guys, if you're getting any value out of this, guys and girls, um, hit that like button. It helps with the YouTube YouTube algorithm. And if you guys are not subscribed to Photoshop Cafe, do me a favor, hit that like button and then hit the subscribe and turn on notifications. All right. Why do I keep saying that? Because I have to. Um, are any of you guys on um, Twitter, by the way? No, not Twitter, Instagram. So I've been sharing some Instagram stories uh, just this week. I've started doing some um, shorts. So here on YouTube, I'm doing the live stream every Thursday, every Tuesday, I do the tutorial. And I'm dropping a few little shorts on there. Um, but I'm also putting them on Instagram. So if you guys are on Instagram, I'm dropping little one minute Photoshop tutorials. I'm going to drop one a day for a little while. So that's Photoshop Cafe on Instagram. So go to Instagram, follow me there. And I'm also dropping them on on uh, TikTok. And our TikTok's actually going really well. So um, follow me on TikTok as well. Yes, I'm 16 again. All right, so moving on, let's do something different. Let's grab a photograph here. And I just want to just kind of really just use this for background because uh, this will work. It doesn't matter which one we do. Um, so here's an interesting effect. So let's just go in here and we're going to create an ellipse and I'm going to show you how to create a kind of a, a sphere. So I'm just going to hit control J to copy that to the top and I'm going to control click. So what has that done? All I did is I made a circle, copied it to a new layer and now I've made a selection and I loaded that selection by control click. So we're constraining it in here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to spherize this. Now, there's so many ways to do this in filter, uh, in Photoshop, but we're going to use the filter distort and we're going to go to spherize. This is old school. This is how I used to do it back in the day. And notice we have the option to go horizontal only, vertical only. So if you want to wrap something around a cylinder, that's how you do it. You want to go full spherical, choose normal, click OK. And now we get this spherical effect. Cool. Now, if you want to make it look more transparent, just kind of pull the opacity back a little bit. Now, I'm going to control click on here and create a new layer because I want to just add a little bit more yeah, sh shading on it, I guess, so to speak. So let's grab a brush and we're going to grab a soft edge brush here. Soft edge brush, brush soft. And um, flow opacity, let's turn the I like low flow. I'm going to take 10 flow, turn the opacity all the way up. And I'm just going to go around the edges here just to kind of darken it in the edges because that's how I believe spheres work on lenses. As it goes towards the end, it gets a little bit darker. Sort of how they work. All right, that's looking better. All right, and then we're going to flip this around, do some whites, make it a little brighter in the middle. And I'm just going to make it smaller here because I want to create, I don't know, a specular. Specular highlight would be nice. A little specular here, little spots there and there. So that kind of gives us that effect. Control D, turn it off. And now we've got something that's looking a little bit more like a glossy sphere. Sometimes you want to try a different blend mode or it'll give you a better result. It may or may not, but let's experiment with this. Yeah, maybe. I kind of like the pin light though. That looks kind of cool but I need to double up on it. Let's increase the opacity on that and maybe control J, double up on it and try a second one. So this is like, ooh, that's looking kind of interesting. So sometimes you just want to kind of go in here and just experiment with some different effects. 
you know different blend modes and stuff like that can really just kind of help add realism to things all right so we're kind of creating a sphere there and if we hide the background you can see you know that's that's the sphere you know here it looks very glossy and here let's take the opacity down just a little bit and i might put this back to normal just for fun all right so that's that's kind of cool all right, so if I wanted to do something, let's just put all of this into a new layer on the top. So we're just selecting everything and I'm going to hit shift option command. So that's all the modifier keys and in the E for merge E, it's going to create a composite layer on top. So this gives us a layer with all the layers together. All right, so let's create a somewhat of a reflection. So we're going to grab the rectangular marquee tool. We're going to make a selection over the sphere. So we've selected that area. And let's hit Control J, Command J on Mac, and that copies that. See that? Now let's flip it. Control T for free transform. And by the way, I use free transform a lot. One of my favorite tools because there's so many things we can do here. Right click, you got all these options. But what we're going to do here is we are just going to flip this. And we want to flip it vertical. Now I want to drag this. I want to keep it in position. So holding down the Shift key. Notice that we'll constrain it and we're going to go here. So it's just kind of touching on the bottom and click OK to apply. Now I could have gone up further and, and all kinds of stuff, but we're doing it this way. All right. So now we're going to choose a little bit of a blur. We're going to choose a filter blur. Let's do a motion blur just to kind of make it look like maybe just we've got um, a reflection, some water or something. So I'm going to hit the shift key and drag this down. And we're just breathing on it. If you look at that, see there's no distortion. Just here, it just gives it a little bit of distortion so it looks a little bit more like, you know, maybe it's some kind of a liquid or something. So it's reflecting. So it's not as perfect as the top part. Um, I don't know. I'm liking the colors. Let's do something fun with the colors here. I'm just going to select these two layers. And once again, let's do the composite layer. Command Shift E. And we're going to take it into Camera Raw. And let's do something fun in camera raw so let's change the color temperature we're going to go under the basic settings here let's make it cooler there we go for some reason the bluish kind of tones give it more of a sci-fi feel let's recover our highlights pop our shadows go for some contrast give it a little contrast here punch the whites but not too much give it some good solid blacks give it some texture I'm going to ignore clarity, but give it a little touch of the haze. Makes the clouds more exciting. Uh, give it some vibrance. Now, I want to just kind of do something a little bit on the sphere here to make a pop. So let's go under the masks here. And under the masks, what I want to use is a radial gradient. All right, so here we are in the radial gradient plastic coating someone's asking for plastic um, wrap is is a good option all right so let's create this gradient here now if i hold down the shift key that will also constrain that to a circle and let's make it a little bit smaller still holding down that shift key and we just got to position this in the middle there we go and let's lighten this up with the exposure See what we're doing here? We're lightening that up. Now, if you want it to blend in with the edges, you can, or you can have it very, very harsh on the edges. And we can do that with the radial gradient. We've got the feather. If I turn the feather down, we can just make this very, very harsh, or we can feather it up here to make it just kind of a little bit more gradual, which I think looks kind of nice. All right. So we can click OK to apply this. And now we're looking kind of cool. Someone said something about plastic wrap. So if I control click on here, I can use that selection to load that selection there. See that? And that's a nice thing about keeping the layers underneath. This is why I don't just flatten it and work. The reason you keep everything is because you can reuse these for different things. So let's see what happens if we control J, copy this to a new layer. So now we've got that sphere on its own. And uh, control click on here. Let's try a plastic wrap. See how it looks since you guys want to use that. So let's use that. I believe, man, I haven't used plastic wrap in years. Is it under distort or is it under stylize? Plastic wrap, where art thou? 
I uh, have not used this. Maybe it's under the filter gallery. Haven't used it in so long. I have I've a feeling it's going to be under our filter gallery. All right, let's go to our filter gallery. And artistic, maybe. There it is, plastic wrap. And uh, maybe we want to bring down the highlight strength just a little bit. Pull down the detail a bit. What happens if we increase the smoothness? That looks kind of cool. All right, let's play around with this. More detailed, less detailed. Let's bring that highlight strength down a little bit. Okay, so we just want to give it just a little bit of wrapping. How's that look to you guys? Click OK. Control D, and there we go. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, if I was a purist, of course, I would copy this into the reflection, but nobody cares. Why don't we give it a glow? Let's choose a glow and maybe we'll look at the reflection at the end of this. So let's go to the outer glow. And what I want to do is I want to give this a double glow. But first of all, let's give it blue because the color is going to show. Let's increase the size of the opacity. And let's increase the size of this glow. All right, so we've got this blue glow. And if you want it to go further, you just hit the spread. See that? All right, so we're going right in there. And that's kind of nice. I like that. I'm going to give it a little bit of noise into that glow. Not that much. That does not look good. Let's pull it back a little bit. A little bit of noise. There we go. That's looking kind of cool. So we've got that. And I want to put a double glow. So I want it a little bit even brighter as it gets closer to our object. All right, so let's create a new one by just clicking Notice we can't add a second glow, right? So what do we do? Well, it's actually quite easy. We just create a drop shadow instead. So let's create a drop shadow. And this is how we do a double glow. Now, you know what's interesting about this is when I look at this, it has the ability to add multiple color overlays. Can anybody tell me why I would need more than one color overlay and one effect where I could just choose a particular color Maybe I'm going to do something with blend modes. I don't know. I just feel like I could just choose a color. But they don't give me a double outer glow, which I feel like would be more useful. Anyway, just mentioning that. OK, so drop shadow. I'm going to use a drop shadow. So under the drop shadow, I'm just going to set this to normal. I'm going to set the color to a white. And notice I can change the size of it. So if I want to go larger, I can. And let's play around with that opacity. And now I'm going to put the second glow. I'm using a drop shadow. All you got to do is set the distance to zero. If you set the distance to zero, a drop shadow is going to work very much like a glow. So let's go back to our outer glow, our original one now. And we're going to dial in a nice balance between the two. I think that looks pretty cool. Now, I feel like that glow may spill over just a little bit. So let's see what happens if we add a little bit of an inner glow here. So for the inner glow, I'm going to go and I'm going to select that blue. Notice I'm using the eyedropper out here. We'll select the color. Let's go a little brighter. Click OK. Let's put this into just a normal blend mode. Just makes it easy. Uh, let's turn the opacity all the way up so we can easily see it. And let's do the size. And now we're bringing that glow inward. Now I'm going to take the opacity all the way down because I just want to have it just have it just kind of creeping on the edges. There we go. And we click OK. And now we've got this kind of cool looking sphere. Now, the purists among us are complaining that the reflection doesn't look good anymore. That's fine. We'll just do the same thing again. We'll duplicate that. We will make a selection around here just like we did before. Control J, Control T, right click and flip vertical. You can see how fast it is once you get used to doing it. And why did I go so fast? Because I did it for you guys before in slow motion. So now I'm just doing it fast just so we can get around to it. Filter, blur. But let's do the motion blur. And we're going to apply it. It'll keep the last settings. Click OK. And now we've got a kind of a cool little kind of a glow effect going on. All right. So that's how you create a sphere. And, you know, maybe it's time travel or whatever. I want to put a person in there. Okay, why not? Let's do it. Let's put a person in here. We've got our cyberpunk chick. That's her official name. And let's go here. And we're going to grab the one of the magic tools. We're going to select subject. 
and let's just mask her out. So just hit the little mask key here. We've got her masked out. Control T. And let's, I have no idea what I'm going to do with her. Um, no idea at all. Maybe she's just hanging out in front of the sphere. I don't know. Just to add some interest here. Do I like it? I like it coming from that side. Yeah, that's going to work. All right, so let's do that. We need a rim light on her. So let me show you an interesting way of creating a rim light. I don't know if you guys have done it this way before. But if you go in here and you work on an object, all you got to do is hit effects. And we can do stroke. All right. Now, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I'm in my element when I'm doing this stuff because I started my career as a graphic designer and um, photography was something I added later, although I've been doing it a long time, but I some of this stuff I haven't done in years and it's so much fun. All right. So anyway, we're just saying that. All right. So we're going to go there. We're going to click OK. And what I need to do is put that on a separate layer. So I'm just going to right click in here and create layers. And so when I click on create layers, what it does is voila, we got our own layer. Awesome. So I want to clip it in here. So I'm going to hold down the alt of the option queue. It's already clipped. Did it. Did it for me. Photoshop thought for me. All right. Awesome. All I got to do now is just move this around a little bit. So I only want that rim light to affect the edges. See what it's doing there? It's just affecting those edges. Maybe it's a little thick. That's fine. But we're going to change our blend mode here. Let's turn the opacity up. Let's change our blend mode to something brighter. Let's find something that's going to work here. Overlay. That looks pretty good. Let's blur it. Filter blur. Gaussian blur. And we can drop this down a little bit. And I'm trying to do a cheat way of getting away with this rim light. I might have to do some changes here. Um, I might have to do it this way. Yeah, it's just a little too much. So I'm just going to hit the V key and I'm going to bring it back up because it's too much. It's too, it's too bright. All right. And then what we'll do is just mask away the area we don't want. So add a mask, hit B for brush. We've got a nice rim light going on in the other edge. Beautiful rim light. But, well, you know what? Maybe we will use that. I've got an idea. All right, so let's hit the brush and we're just going to brush away here. Let's turn the opacity and flow all the way up. I've actually got an idea what we're going to do with this. Hit the brush and we're just going to paint away the areas we don't want in the middle. And I don't want it there. Got a nice rim light there. It's sort of working. Don't want it there. All right, so what we've got here is we've got some blue coming from that side. And control U, let's see what we can do with this. Can I pop this blue? I don't know if I can or not, but let's try it. And I'll take the lightness down just a little bit. There we go. And just kind of trying to get a nice blue color. Now, another way to do the Rim light, of course, is just painted in. I've done another tutorial on that, but I just want to kind of show you another option. Let's hit that saturation. That's what we're going for here. There we go. Got a little bit of that. Maybe you need to blur it a little bit more, brighten it a little bit more, all the things we could do. But what I, want, I need to do here is just a little bit of red on the other side. So we're going to go here. Let's grab a gradient. I want red as the foreground color. Let's select that color. It's kind of like a purpley kind of color well, I guess we're doing the cyberpunk and then I want to do the foreground to transparent so let's choose foreground to transparent drag a little bit of that color across there change the blend mode into something a little bit more palatable maybe in there somewhere and yeah there we go now we're starting to get somewhere and let's do the same thing on the other side let's grab the blues and uh, do something with that. So let's grab the color picker, select the blue from our model here. On the other side, foreground to transparent, still working. Drag it across there. We get a little bit of that color. Change the blend mode to something more palatable. Color burn looks kind of cool. What else we got? Overlay, soft light. These are kind of looking pretty good. So this is one of the things I love now is the ability to be able to just preview these um, colors so easily. 
Remember how hard it was before in the past with these blend modes? I kind of like that one. Uh, if we take the opacity down, yeah, it's just doing a little bit. And I just wanted to give it just a little bit of a, a touch there. And you know what? We got something that's kind of sci-fi looking. I think, um, yeah, I think that'll work. That'll work for now. So, how are you guys enjoying that? Are you getting any value out of this? Um, how are we guys doing there? Oh, Bruce had to had to bowl. That's fine. Um, I do this stuff like this. Rudd Shelley likes to do this. Awesome. All right. So what it comes down to just a little bit of time here is we're going to look quickly at um, some of what you guys have done. I'm just going to drop this into the chat here. This is what you guys have been posting in our Facebook group this week. Uh, value prices. Thank you, Vaughn. And I'm just posting that in there. So we have a Facebook group in here. Um, it's in the chat there. And uh, for those of you who are not in the chat, let me, I'll, I'll try and remember to drop it into the comment on the replay. And I'll just paste it up here quickly for those. So you're in Facebook and this is our group number. Now let me just make it smaller so you can see the whole thing at once. This is, this is our group. This is where we hang out in between life from lockdown for now. And, uh, I say for now, because you never know how the social media has changed. So that's our group. Um, or just go under Photoshop, just go into the Facebook groups and search for Photoshop Cafe, uh, and you'll find us there. All right, so let's see what you guys have done this week. Uh, we got Bridge here, and I'm gonna pop this open and show some of your guys' work, starting with Warren. And I see Warren's name is Warren. That's Warren. I just figured that out. <laughs> I know. It took me so long to figure that out. I know. Um, so if you are here, say hello. And um, this is your PC. I kind of like this. It kind of reminds me of Clint Eastwood. It has a really kind of a period kind of a piece feel to it. All right. So what else we got here? We've got this one here from Leo Lu. Um, we don't do a lot of uh, nudity on the site, but in this case, I wanted to make a little exception because it's not really showing anything. Um, and also, it was just a fairy, and it was kind of, I, I like the effect there. But, you know, I'm not saying that to encourage nudity because we are we don't really um, have it on a group. Okay, so San Clemente Pier, Tony Mule, I know you're here. You were here early. And I like how you added this lightning. Was that Boris effects there that you did that in, uh, Tony, um, it's, it's a cool effect there. Uh, let us know. And I'll look, what did you add the sky as well? It looks like a sky replacement, perhaps. Um, looking for Tony. Oh, there's Warren. Warren is there. Thank you. Good to see you're in the house. Warren D. Uh, I have an ethical question. I posted an image of the St. Clemente Pier and replaced the sky with a lightning bolt. I was told it was amazing by a friend. Should I have told them how I did it? Um, you can, okay. I mean, it's fine. Um, you know, I would, you know, say, hey, yeah, you know, it was Photoshop. It's probably a good thing uh, just to let them know. Uh, but what you don't want to do is tell people, yeah, you know, hey, I photographed this when it was done in Photoshop. As far as if something's Photoshopped, I, I don't personally care. Um, just don't try to sell it as, you know, hey, I did this in camera when you didn't. So you can say, yeah, Photoshop's fun, haha, huh, or whatever. So yeah, it's probably not a bad idea to disclose it. Um, okay, Dana Carr. Dana, are you in the house? I love your um, abstracts here. Life goes on and the clocks and everything ticking here. This is cool. It's got a nice, nice vibe to it. Nicely done. I don't know if you're there, Dana. And John William Bell. I kind of like this because it says you can't give up. There's so much to learn. So there's the books. I like that. So she's kind of learning, but I love how you've got the symbolism here of the wise owl and the elephant that never forgets. Now, I wish I never forgot anything because I've forgotten more about Photoshop than I know. Um, so let's continue here. What else we got? Marcin. Marcin. I just like the effect here as a painterly thing. We've got these, you know, it's a very fantasy kind of a moody i'm a sucker for mood i do like moods and i think that's kind of cool i'm thinking of like dracula or a werewolf coming out or something uh here it's kind of cool 
Then we've got John William. If you guys are here, by the way, and we show you peace, say hello. Um, Nancy Jones. Hey, using PS is a skill just the same as photography as a skill. That's right. Absolutely. So, um, and good to see you, Dana. And that that's true. So yeah, doing something in Photoshop is not to take away from uh, what we're doing because yes, there is a skill involved in Photoshop. You don't just click a filter and it appears as you guys are discovering. There's a recipe that, and also there's a good taste for doing it right. So it does look believable. Uh, Paul Ria, you're welcome. All right. So I like what you've done here, John. This is really cool. Um, this is almost like something I would see as a painting in a gallery has a really, really neat effect. I love the texture and you know, I feel like I re could reach out and touch it. Nicely done. Um, what do we got here? Philip Neal, good friend of mine, P. Neal. Um, I'm glad you're doing your painting again. So Philip paints these from scratch inside of Photoshop. And um, I'm glad he's doing this again. It's been a while. Looking good. Nice job. And um, and I know he lives up in Montana, I believe, and loves to do wildlife. Or no, Colorado. Colorado, I'm sorry. All right, one more. And and by the way, guys, if you post your work, then, um, you know, there's a chance I will share it next week from that Facebook group. And uh, Hannah, Hannah, I love this. This is so fun. We've got the squirrel in the parachute with the, um, the goggles and fighting back with the acorns. This is awesome. This is real fun. It's pretty, um, it's just, kind of uh yeah it's it's hilarious i like the humor in there that's very clever makes me smile thank you for doing that hannah and thank you everybody for um yeah is uh, we, uh chris bacon saying they're brilliant i think it is brilliant all right guys so that's at two o'clock time is up it's been a fun week seeing you guys i uh, can't wait to see you let me go to the full screen camera here can't wait to see you all again next week at 1 p.m pacific time and also um you know once again hit that like button if you haven't uh subscribe and hit notifications so you don't miss any videos and um tuesday's tutorial check that out um which was actually inspired from here let me know in the comments what you guys would like to learn someone asked the last week how do i prepare a picture for instagram so I created that tutorial here. I'll show you on YouTube. Let's go right here. So here we are in YouTube here. Someone asked, so your wish is my command. I created a tutorial here on how to prepare pictures for Instagram. So, um, and it's just there. You'll find it there on our Photoshop Cafe. Let me get back. I went so fast on our channel here. So everything you need to know about that. So, you know, let me know in the comments what you guys would like to learn. I do read all those comments. Even if I don't get them all live, I look at them afterwards and um, and they inspire a lot of the tutorials because I want to teach what you guys want to learn. So uh, check that out. And uh, I'm also going to be dropping some stories this week, um, some reels and some Instagram. So if you guys are on Instagram, you're on Facebook, Twitter, or, um, you know, any of the... Instagrams, whatever uh, social media that you guys are on. A friend of mine calls them Insta faces. So whatever you're on, they just follow us at Photoshop Cafe and I'll be dropping just quick one minute tutorials um, almost every day this week. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining us and I'm ready for next week. So I'll be doing a um, webinar for BenQ soon. Yes, I am photo maker. I'm not sure what date that is, but it's coming up. I'll be doing a webinar for BenQ. Um, very soon so guys check that out and i also have another secret webinar coming up soon so follow me on social media and i'll let you know about that because i can't announce it yet but there's something new coming out and i'm going to be doing something uh, and i'll be sharing that on i'll let you know on facebook twitter mainly for those kind of things so all right guys thanks for joining us see you next time